I don't have to take legal aid. Uh, I might not. But, wow, listen. You know, I, I, I like that because listen, and we're talking about love. So when you're really listening to that quiet spot, you're listening to love because that's what that quiet spot is. That's the energy of who you are is this power of love. And so when you're listening, love tells you what to do. I love that. Wow. Very cool. So I'll start with um, Oliver Wendell Holmes once attended a meeting in which he was the shortest man there. This is a true story. Someone said to him, I bet you feel kind of small amongst us big fellas. And he said, I do. I feel like a dime among a lot of pennies. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. I can relate, you know. Everybody's always taller, you know, but I love that. See, we're talking about loving yourself. Now, I, I'm not sure if that was the truly loving that deep love, I mean, among pennies, that's maybe a little different, but I, I, think, I mean, it's cool, it's, it's what it's about. It reminds me of the story that uh, my friend who had a little three-year-old girl, she's grown up now, but she was three years old, and they went to a restaurant, and the little girl was jabbering to everybody in the restaurant, you know, and they were all talk, talking how cute she was, and when she walked out, she said to her mom, she said, you know, everybody in this town just loves me, mama. <laughs> And she was telling me about that, and I got the biggest kick out of that because that's that's what kids do. And and I'm looking at my little grandchild Ava. Wow, she's eight months, eight months old already. You know, and remember when she was just born. But Alex tells me her mama that she lays in the crib and she just looks like in the air. You know, she looks all around and she just kind of starts to babble and talk and smile, smile at this nothingness. You know, what is she seeing there? You know, that she's just connected. You know, and then she takes her toes and she starts sucking on her toes. She's got ten best friends down there, all her little toes. You know, she just loves them. It's like she loves herself. She looks at her hands and she looks at her toes and she looks at everybody, you know, and all this love. And when she has a wet diaper, she just screams and cries and screams and cries until somebody changes it. Then she's done. She's hungry. She screams and cries and they feed her. And she's done and she goes back to just looking at everything. And I'm thinking that we all, see, um, the reason I'm telling you, I mean, I talk about my grandkids, but I'm telling you, because you are like that. Every one of us, every one of us, right, came from this place of love. We came, and that, that's where we all did. We came from this unconditional love, and that's who we are. And she's still connected. And Anna, the little girl that I talked about, was still connected. We're still connected, but we don't know. See, as we stepped into this, earthly level, as we stepped into life, we decided to take on form and stuff. It, and I keep picturing it kind of like there's these golden threads, right, that we're attached to this beautiful field of love. But as we step into the human condition, it gets kind of clouded up, you know, with egos and with fear and with all this stuff of life. And we pretty soon forget this divine connection, you know, this beauty that we have, that this field where all of the answers are and all of the love comes from, we forget about it. And, and it's scary to us. And so we, we just go about our lives and we, we start to focus on the negative of life. We step into all the stuff instead of the clearness that we are, instead of doing life. So, so what is it, you know, that is stopping us from getting back into that field, you know, that field of love, that field of where we came from? And, and I got to thinking about it. And I think it's really, instead of being present, instead of just dealing with what is, you know, being there, we start to criticize ourselves and we make up stories. We make up stories about what's going on in our life. You know, I, I was actually thinking about, like Ava, I talked about her diaper, they just changed her diaper. See, it's just done. She has a wet diaper, she cries and cries, it's done. But we would make up a story about that diaper. Right? You know, we'd say, oh, you know, nobody changed the diaper. Isn't mom going to change the diaper? What about dad? They don't love me. They don't do this. They don't do that. You know, we make up stories in our head instead of just experiencing the feeling and moving on. We have all of these stories and we live in the story. We have become somebody else instead of this divine essence. You know, we're both, but we're starting to identify then with something out there. We're starting to identify with this little human that, that's going through all the struggles in life instead of identifying with this clear being. And when we step into the silence and we listen, we start to get the feeling that maybe we're bigger than that. We're bigger than we ever could imagine, that we're bigger beyond measure. I love that. We, and, and I was thinking about, you know, we really trap ourselves. 
We trap ourselves in our stories of what's going on. There was anybody here that doesn't have a story to tell of something that's going on in their life that just hurts. And what I'm saying is, is that, yeah, it hurts, and we have to feel it. You know, we don't shove it down, we feel it. But then we don't make a story go on and on and on. We move through it. We call it bamming it, bless it, accept it, and then we move on. We move on to something different. And that different needs to be the realm of love where we came from, A Course in Miracles. I love it because it, what it says is that for every action, every action, we're either asking for love or we're giving love, see? And so many of us, our whole life, are asking for love. When you're in pain, you're asking for love. When you're in a fight with somebody, when you're irritated, all it is is asking for love. You know, we're, we're asking for it. And most people spend lifetimes. I think about my mom, you know, I just loved her dearly, but she was in a lot of pain. And now that I, I look back, I could see her, and I just know it was a call for love. And I couldn't love her enough. She had to learn to love herself. And that's with each of us, that this field of love has to come from us. We have to love ourselves before we can give it out. So if you're experiencing difficult people in your life, you've got to love yourself before you can actually love them. And then it's up to them. It's up to them to love themselves. You know, we spend lifetimes, see? And, and, and what we do is, I've noticed in my life sometimes, I pat myself on the back when I do good things, right? I love myself when I do good things. But when the negative comes, I'm not so lovable. And I guess that this call about love, this self-love, is really about loving all of us. You know, the negative, the, the dark parts, the shadow. We all have a shadow, and the shadow is the dark parts of our life, you know, the parts that we the jealousies, the fears, the anger, the resentments. And what this is about is being able to embrace that and not shoving it down, not shoving it down, because when you push it down, you create a shadow. You pretend that everything's just fine, and guess what? It comes right up like a ball. It comes right up through your mouth sometimes, doesn't it? In the language that you use, it comes out. So, so what loving yourself is about is respecting yourself enough to be able to see that and to be able to see what's going on in your life. Not trying to be so good, not really that, but just experiencing life as life comes. So if there's an issue, you experience it. You move through it and then you know that you're more than that. You're way more than that. You know, all of us, light, dark, you know, self-love, self-love really forms the foundation of every relationship in your life. When you love yourself, all the other relationships fall into place. If you've got relationships all over that aren't working, it's usually because there's something in you that you don't love. Something in you that you don't love. If we did anything in spiritual practice, it would be to love ourselves deeply. It would heal everything in our life. Everything. If we loved ourselves enough, it's the single most important thing that we can do for ourselves is to love deeply. We let go of, we see where our love is so conditional. It's so conditional. I can do this only. I love myself only when I do good things. But when we start to love it all, we start to really step into something that is authentic. You know, we, we step into our authentic love. And authentic love is the agape love. It's the biggest love that there is. It's the love that we came from. Ram Dawes, I've been reading, um, you know what the book is, uh, we were trying to talk about it. It's called Be Love Now. Be Here Now. He did, now he does, has what called Be Love Now. And what he says is that the problem is, is that we're too busy holding on to our unworthiness. And I can tell you that's the truth. We counsel a lot of people, you know, here, a lot of people in jails. <laughs> and, 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 and that's the truth, is that the one common denominator is we don't feel worthy enough. Now, people don't come to us and say, I don't feel worthy. But underlying everything that they tell us, that's what it is. I don't feel good enough about who I am. Because if you did, if you did, you would soar. I think, I think Deepak says you'll soar with the angels. And you would if you really did that. Thoreau said what a man thinks of himself indicates his fate. I believe that. I really do believe that. However centered you are with loving yourself is the next step of what happens to you, of what's going on around you or how you deal with it. And the Buddha said that, you know, you can search the entire, entire universe for someone more deserving of your love Actually, you said that, it was just here in Salzburg, but Buddha said it too. 
well, Buddha said it first, and then he did it. <laughs> I think she copied him. <laughs> but she said, you can search the world yourself, and you will never find anybody that is more deserving of your love than you. So think about that. Just take that in for a minute. You. You know, you deserve your love. And when you feel it, and when you feel the love, you know, there, there, you ever just feel so much love, it shoots out your fingers and your toes? You know, and, and I, I, I do sometimes, to tell you the truth, and I was doing that this morning. I was driving in the car. I love it. I love when my music is blurring, you know, and, um, and it was, I can't remember what it was. Oh, I was going, my endless love, you know, with Lionel Richie, and I was singing, and I was thinking to myself, you know, so I love me, you know, because I was thinking about this, and it was like, all of a sudden, I just felt this like energy you know, because it's so powerful, you know. And I'm thinking, but there's nobody else that deserves it as much as I do because when I feel that way, I can love you more. When I'm feeling really crummy about myself, and that goes on too, you know, I don't love everybody else as much. You know, my life isn't as wonderful as it is when I'm just feeling this endless love. You know, I love him, by the way, Lionel Richie. You can do, should do a CD of this. So, so you can only give what you have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 I know. Maybe we can get in here. You think, you know? <laughs> so when you have all these reserves of love and you have all of this energy, you know, it, it's just like it's it's what it does is it centers you enough where you can love the world, and that's what it's about. Even like I got stuff going on in my life, and today it doesn't matter, you know, because I feel really centered in love today. Not every day, but if we could do this every day, what if I could hear that song every day? What if every day I made it a practice to step into that field, to pray, to meditate, to be in the silence, to listen? What if I really felt that? Every day my problems wouldn't matter, right? They wouldn't matter, and pretty soon they would just disappear. They would just disappear, because all of my problems are how I see things. They're in here, you know? And then I could give love. Then I could give love, and that's what this is about. That's what this whole life is about. It's about taking it in and giving it back. Taking it in and giving it back. It's the cycle of love. Everything is about love, you know? And when we love ourselves, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not so swayed by other people's opinion. If you think I'm goofy up there, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's okay, right? It might matter to Judy. She'd go, oh my God, what's going on here? But the truth is, is that, you know, other people, you know, you are the one that's important. You know, it doesn't matter if everybody thinks you're a, a dummy, you know? It doesn't. <laughs> Genuine love towards everybody is the greatest service that you can give the world, you know? So right now, I guess the call is to release any belief, any belief that you have that is stopping you from loving yourself. Don't think about it as egotistical. You know, I am wonderful and I am perfect. Because we're not talking about loving your ego. We're talking about we're talking about aligning with the bigness of who you are, with the love. And once your, 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 your um, human self is aligned with your divine self, there is nothing that can stop us, nothing. You know, when you know that you are one, one, and really connected, because we are scientifically, I could get into quantum physics, but we are connected. We are connected. You and I are connected at the very, very soul. So when I see you, I see me. Right? And I see beautiful faces, so that means I must be pretty beautiful in here. Right? But when you start to see ugly faces, right, out there, guess what? Then you need to work on you. When you see pain out there, work on here. Make the pain go away by feeling the love inside. So, so when you experience it, when you know that you are connected to something way bigger than that, you're experiencing the greatest love of all. Is that Lionel Richie? The no. yeah. Whitney the greatest love of all is happening to me. And I was thinking if I could do anything in the whole world, like sing, that's what I would do. I would just like sing out this beautiful voice. But if I did, you know, then I wouldn't like myself as much. But, but you know what I'm the greatest love of all, that's what it is, is inside of you. There is nothing bigger. The greatest love isn't out there in a boyfriend, in a husband. Although, you know, yeah. we love our husbands, right? But, but when, when you love not, not when you love yourself, when you love yourself so much, your love spills over to hell. And that happens to each of us. It spills to each and every one of us. So this is my prayer. This is my prayer is that we love ourselves so deeply, you know, that we remember to serve each other. And we always, we always love deeply. And remember that where we came from is a place of love and that we are that. Thank you.